Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to ask the age-old question, does a guitar's body actually affect your tone? Is tone wood real? And does a heavier body sustain better than a lighter one? Well, let's find out. So as you guys can see, I finally got my t-shirts going. So this is the wants versus needs. Wants being food, shelter, and clothing. Needs being perhaps more guitars. I don't know. Anyway, if you want to grab one like this, check it out in the video description below. So today we're going to be selectively removing pieces of this guitar's body and doing audio tests along the way to see if there's any changes in tone or sustain. Now before we get too eager and start cutting, we need to record our bass line. So I've got the guitar tuned to an open chord so I can just strum it. All right, so we'll record that so that we can tell if there's any changes as we start to remove the body. We're gonna be plugged straight into the Blue Angel amp, mic'd up with the Sennheiser E906 mic and Earthworks SR25. No compression, no verb, straight in. Let's start recording. All right, so I've set up a picking line just to assure I strum in the exact same spot for each test. For the sustain tests, I'll do three passes just to eliminate any variables in my picking velocity. And other than that, let's get going. Okay, let's go make that first cut. <laughs> All right, you guys, I'm back. I removed roughly maybe 30% of the guitar's weight. This thing looks crazy now, so what we're gonna do that warps the brain. Anyway, we're going to record our uh, picking tracks and our sustain tracks again, and then we'll make a few more cuts. Here we go. All right, onwards and upwards, let's make cut number two. We'll lose another maybe 15, 20%. Let's lop off this little chunk here. Let's go. Well, you guys, we are losing weight fast. I do believe it has developed a little bit of neck dive. Can you imagine that? So let's plug it in for cut number two, do our sustain test and our tone test. All right, you guys, for cut number three, I've pulled the pick guard off so I can remove as much wood as possible. Let's get to cutting. All right, you guys, let's check out the results of cut number three. So you can see we've removed the whole lower horn here slash part of the body. Um, you've got a hollow cavity right here, so it weighs almost nothing. On the front side, uh, we, I left the jack where it is, but again, it's mostly hollow. And then of course, uh, we have the main portion of the body, um, but that's been routed for the trim, of course. So we have about 30% of the body's weight left and we've removed about 70. And what is remaining is either hollow or the main structure of the guitar. Now this is not gonna sit on my lap, so I put the strap buttons on here and here. Um, let's plug it in and see what happens. All right, you guys, we finished recording all our clips. Time to analyze some data. Get your guesses in right now. So clip number one was the full guitar, okay? No modifications. Clip number two was with the top half of the guitar taken right off, including the upper horn, okay? And then the next one was removal of the back part of the guitar behind the trim. 
And the final one was the lower horn and part of the control cavity, okay? So when you add up all these pieces of a guitar, that is about 70% of the weight of the instrument, okay? So that being said, let's switch views and look at the data. All right, you guys, let's check out the sustained data. So this is really interesting. Now, the first thing you notice here is that all the clips are shockingly similar. So that's the first thing to notice. I was very surprised by that. So the way we're gonna read this is the top clip here is the full guitar body. And then this is with uh, you know, the whole top horn upper portion of the guitar removed. This is with the section uh, behind the trim. And then the orange one at the bottom here is basically everything off the guitar except for the essentials. So when you look at how you know, the sustain lasted, um, really, really interesting. So the difference between like the shortest clip here and the longest is about a second. So we're not talking, you know, huge differences in sustain, which like I said, very interesting. Now, when you look at the velocities of, you know, how I picked here, they're very even. So you can see each one of the clips very close and the sustain trails, if I zoom in even further here, you know, very similar as we go across. So that's the first thing I noticed, really interesting. So let's go on to take number two. Okay, so this was pass number two. Let's see if there's any anomalies here. And when we look at it, definitely not. No more anomalies. Uh, pretty much uh, very similar to take number one. Okay, slight variances, again, about a second, maybe just over a second between the third take. I think if you look at the velocity here, I might have picked slightly less uh, aggressively than the others. Uh, but again, very close. Okay, interesting. Let's go check out take number three. So here's take number three, and again, the same thing bears out. So very, very interesting that we can radically, radically change the guitar body. Um, here, like I said before, the orange one, almost, you know, the body was just torn apart, right? So really, really interesting that that didn't seem to affect the sustain, the sustain at all. Really, really interesting. So there you guys go. Let's look at all three clips together here. I'll just shrink them back up. Scooch over. There we go. So there was take one. Here's take two. Here's take three. Nothing out of the ordinary. All the data suggests that no matter what you do to your guitar body, if you have a small guitar or a huge guitar, uh, sustain's gonna remain you know, relatively unaltered. So really interesting stuff. All right, well, honestly, I was expecting something different, but I've got no horse in this race. I'm open to what the data says. And the data says it doesn't matter if your guitar's huge or tiny, sustain is not gonna be meaningfully impacted. So over the course of 20 seconds, one might be you know, 18.5, one might be 20, one might be 19, one might be 20, but it's not like one is 10 seconds and one is 20 seconds. They were all really, really close. So surprising result for me, but that's what it is. All right, the sustain test is in the books. Time to talk about tone. Let's see if the tone changes in a meaningful way from the full guitar all the way whittled down to just the final result. What I'm gonna do is play the four clips back to back as we slowly you know, take away some mass of that guitar. And then what I'm gonna do is play clip one, which is the full guitar and clip four back to back, just to see if there's a big difference uh, there as well. So let's take a listen to those clips.
there you guys go. Myth number two, it doesn't affect the tone, not in a meaningful way. I think I can maybe hear a slight difference in the upper mids and the very highest end. Um, but when you put that into perspective, the difference between like playing up by your neck pickup and by your bridge pickup, super easy to hear. And if I plugged in, that would be a massive difference. Um, and so when you put that into perspective, just moving your pick side to side has a, like a, a big difference in your tone. Um, this was nowhere near that. So I think we can safely say um, removal of most of the guitar's weight does not have a meaningful effect on sustain or on the tone of the instrument. Let's talk about what that means. So now that we have this knowledge, how does it affect us in a practical way? Well, first of all, I think it shows that body shape doesn't matter. As I slowly started whittling the body shape down, there wasn't a meaningful difference in sustain or tone. All right, it really felt different, um, but that's a whole nother issue. So I think body shape doesn't matter. If you like flying Vs or Explorers or Les Pauls or Telecasters or BC Rich Warlock, you know, whatever kind of weird and wonderful shape you, uh, you can have, it's not gonna really impact the tone in a meaningful way. So I think that's the first thing. Pick a body shape that you like and roll with it. Now the second practical takeaway from an experiment like this is that weight was not a critical factor in either tone or sustain, which was pretty surprising. So that means next time you guys are shopping for a guitar and you're trying out two Les Pauls, pick the light one. If you're trying out strats, grab the light one. Uh, your back will thank you in the future and it really didn't affect the tone in any serious or meaningful way. And thirdly, I'd like to talk about resonance. So as I started to remove bits and pieces of the guitar body, it started to feel worse and worse and resonated in a different way. So again, I don't think it affects the, the tone or the sustain of the instrument, but if you're shopping for a new guitar, I would say find one that really feels good to play. So some instruments, when you strum a, a big chord just acoustically, like not plugged into an amp, they just feel a little dead. And then others just really vibrate and the energy from the neck and the body and the strings, um, you can feel it up against your torso and it just feels good. And most people are like, that's the guitar for me. That's the one I want. So I would say pick one like that. Now, if you have a guitar that doesn't really resonate well, I don't think it affects the tone or the sustain, like I said before. So don't worry about that. I've got guitars in my collection that yeah, just feel a little bit dead when you play them. But when you plug in, it sounds exactly the same as any other guitar. So bear that in mind, but I would say pick the lightest one, pick the one that resonates and that energy gets transferred into you because when you feel good playing an instrument, you're gonna play better. Now, do you guys remember that episode of Top Gear where the guys tried to destroy that Toyota truck? They put it through every torture test imaginable and the thing just kept ticking. Eventually, they did destroy it and put it in their studio as sort of like a memento or a talking piece. I think that's what we're gonna do with this guitar. We'll hang it up in the studio, use it as an interesting talking piece. Now, if there's any other ideas that you guys would like to see me tackle on this channel, crazy or otherwise, let me know in the comments below if there's any other myths or common misconceptions uh, that you'd like me to tackle to see if they're true or not. Again, let me know in the comments below and I'll see what I can do. Thanks so much for watching, you guys. Check out the t-shirts in the video description below. The rest of my information will be on the screen right now. Have an awesome week, you guys. Take care.